Chemistry is where you put two people together and a reaction happens. If you put Alice and Bob in a room together, what can you say beyond Alice exists, Bob exists, and they keep existing together? I'm not necessarily talking about romantic chemistry here, but I do think romantic chemistry hinges upon this general chemistry. When people get really passionate about shipping two characters, it's generally because there's a dynamic there. Because each character has one or more traits that interact with the other's traits in interesting ways. That's how people write fanfics with just the two characters and no plot. How much can you write before you start repeating yourself? Because once you run out of stuff, when the chemical reaction fizzles out, you'll get bored of shipping them and then go do something else. So what is it that makes certain characters have a chemical reaction when you mix them together? Differences? Similarities? Well, it depends. For instance, if you mix two domineering characters, they'll have more of a reaction with each other than two passive characters who are happy being told what to do. It's not quite as simple as opposites have more chemistry. They do tend to have more chemistry, but that just makes it a rough rule of thumb. I like to think of it like this. To play ball, you need to be standing on opposite sides of the same field. That means more than just make them different in some ways, but similar in other ways. That's a completely vacuous piece of advice that can mean anything. In actual chemistry, which atoms form molecules with which other atoms is determined by the configuration of electrons in their outer shell or something. Point is, characters have chemistry when they have traits that click with each other in some way, traits that interact in interesting ways. Someone who loves pizza and someone who's neutral on pizza doesn't have much chemistry. Okay, being neutral on pizza is not a trait, it's a non-trait. But someone who loves pizza is not going to have much chemistry with someone who hates liars. Those are not traits that interact. They're just gonna whoosh past each other. There's no reaction there. The reader probably isn't going to feel compelled to ship the mimetic pizza lover with the character whose defining trait is hating liars, because there's nothing to talk about. For instance, I have a character, Dolly, who's really hard on herself and constantly worries about doing things for the wrong reasons, subconsciously being hateful or biased or creepy or having less than pure intentions or otherwise secretly being a bad person. Then there's Seth, who's a bit of a cynic and likes to complain about how people suck and everyone's fake and no one really cares about anything except themselves. Naturally, Seth is a walking trigger for Dolly's insecurities. Bam, chemistry. Or for a more positive example, take Yuri and Mo. Uh, Yuri is kind of timid and beats around the bush and has trouble speaking her mind to most people, whereas Mo is blunt. When they notice Yuri waffling, they have no qualms being like, let me guess, do you think my shirt looks ugly? Or something. Uh, Yuri is also pretty forgiving and won't get mad at Mer or make them feel embarrassed if they guess wrong, so they're able to connect with each other more easily, while Yuri would struggle to connect with someone who's equally hesitant, and Mer might push away someone who isn't as understanding as Yuri. I don't think every character has to have chemistry with each other. For instance, Saku and Alana, the two I'm drawing in these time lapses. Their reaction when I put them together I would say is situational. Once the situation is reserved, the reaction fizzles out and they kind of just peacefully coexist. At that point, Alana steps back into being more of a supporting character in the next arc which focuses on a different character. In general, it's not a bad thing for your main character to not have much chemistry with supporting characters further in the background. In fact, it can provide a sense of stability and give you a break from the more intense dynamics between the more focal characters. In my opinion, a lack of chemistry is mostly a problem if you're trying to make both the characters in question and their relationship a big focus of your story. Because when there's no chemistry, there's nothing to say. The reaction wants to fade into the background, but you won't let it. Which makes it really boring because you'll have to come up with things to say when there's nothing there.